the limit of x approaching 0 from the negative side of this equation. Now, we could leave it with this equation, but we could also, if you want to, change this equation actually to x cubed minus 1 over x. How do I do that? Multiply top and bottom here by x. Bring it together. It doesn't matter which one we use. I just wanted to show you you can do that. Now, if I want the limit as x approaches 0, just in general, does it exist? No. Because you get 0 over, sorry, you get 0 on the bottom and you get negative 1 on top. So would this be an asymptote? We know it's an asymptote because when you plug in 0, you get negative 1 over 0. So the problem is, if we're taking the limit as x approaches 0 from the negative side, it does not exist, but could we give it a negative or positive infinity? Yes. So again, we know when we plug in 0, you get negative 1 over 0, which means it's a vertical asymptote. So we know it's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. We just want to see from the negative side, is my limit negative or positive? And basically, how would you figure that out? You basically just make a table and plug in values and see which direction it's going. OK. See which direction it's going is the best bet to see if it's going up or if it's going down and so forth. So let's just make a quick little table. We're approaching 0 from the negative side. So give me two numbers that are approaching from the negative side. Well, and I'm going to do it like I'm going to do it from negative 2 and negative 1 because I'm approaching from right to left to right. Now, again, it doesn't matter which equation you used. I'm just using this one because I don't know, I like it better for some reason. When I plug in negative, one, negative 2, negative 2 cubed is going to be negative 8 minus 1 over negative 2, which gives us, is that negative, positive 9 over 2? So positive 9 over 2. And then if we plug in negative 1, we get negative 1 minus 1 over negative 1, which becomes positive 2. Is that right? Positive 2. Now this one right here, isn't that 4 point? Five. So what do you see? Is it going down or getting up? Aren't the values kind of going smaller? So if we wanted to plug in negative 0.5, do you think it would be smaller and smaller and smaller? You can kind of see the trend. It's easier putting whole numbers in. So my answer would be negative infinity. Because we know it's a vertical asymptote. We notice by the table, it's basically going downward trend. My answer is negative infinity. Technically, it does not exist. But we can put negative infinity as a description, and it's better to do that. OK. 48, the limit as x approaches 1 half. Well, first, plug in 1 half. Or let's look at this real quick. I'm going to rewrite this. Actually, before we do that, the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared sine pi x over cosine pi x. I want to think about it this way. Is that maybe a little bit easier to spot where there could be asymptotes? Because this wasn't a fraction. You might go, oh, it's continuous. This has some breaks right here. When you plug in 1 half here, you get cosine pi over 2. And cosine pi over 2 equals? Zero. You get 0. And sine pi over 2 is 1, right? 1 times 1 half is 1 half? 1 half squared, thank you. 1 half squared is 1 four. 1 four times 1 half is 1 eighth. But does it really matter? Is it a constant over 0? 
it, it's a fraction, but it's still a number. So do we have a vertical asymptote? Yes. So we do have a vertical asymptote. We do have a vertical asymptote at x equals one half. So, does a limit exist at one half? No. But could it possibly be described as infinity or negative infinity? If they both, for instance, if this graph has an asymptote, if they both go up, can we call it infinity? If they both go down, can we call it negative infinity? So basically, you just got to do a little table to see which direction they're going. But you have to do both sides. Got it? So let's make a little table here. And we're approaching one half. This is really big. So one half's here in the middle. Is that okay? To the right of one half would be maybe like one and two. To the left of one half would be zero and negative one. And we're going to try to find the trend of this graph on both sides. So well, the easiest number to plug in first is zero. And you could do it either one, but this might be easier for you to look at than tangents. Most people don't know their tangents in their head. So when I plug in zero, so cosine zero is one. So you're going to get one on the bottom. And when you plug in zero, sine zero is zero, and zero times anything is zero. So this is zero. Did I do that right? Zero gets zero out. Now, I just realized something. I'm dealing with trig functions. Should I have chosen numbers like this? Don't trig functions, especially when you have cosine here, isn't there an interval where it's going to have multiple asymptotes? Doesn't it have a multiple, an asymptote at one half and every pi value after? So I might have made a mistake here by choosing numbers like this. I'm going to stick with it for now. Let's see if we can get a trend. We just got to think about, in this interval, are we going to have an as asymptote between 0 and negative 1? I don't believe so. Let's keep it going, but we have to think about that. Anyways, when you plug in negative 1, cosine pi, negative pi. Cosine negative pi is... Cosine negative pi, I'm trying to think it to the left. That means it's negative 1. And sine negative pi is going to be 0. So that's 0. That's also 0. That's not helping me too much. Okay, is it? And basically, you think these values might have the same because don't trig functions that tend to be symmetrical? So we probably aren't getting anywhere here. So what we probably want to do here is think about trigs and maybe choose some very, very close values. See, it doesn't always work to use whole numbers, does it? Especially with graphs that kind of have a curve still up and down and... Anyways, we had a little issue here. So, a better value to choose... Um, anybody want to take a guess at a better value to choose for this one? You probably want to choose smaller fractions. <laughs> Just choose a lot, lot smaller fractions. We still got one half here. So what's a little bit less? Maybe one third. And then less than one third, maybe be one sixth. And over here, let's do like two thirds and five six. Now we did make a mistake, but that's a good mistake to make. You know, I'm actually glad I made this mistake because honestly, that's what the route you might take and go, um, this doesn't tell me anything. I'm not telling if it's going up or down. I got two zeros. What that tell me? It's flat, looks like. It's not flat. So I start over. Could I plug in all these values? Can I just tell you the answers? Save us some time. If you want to deal with fractions, 
The answers are, I believe, 0 0.02, 0 0.20, negative 0.8, negative 0.57. So, from here to here, did we get bigger or smaller? From here to here, we're getting bigger. What about these? From here to here, remember going towards this way. What are we doing as we go this way? Are we going smaller? So what do you see about this asymptote? They're going opposite directions. So does it exist? The answer is does not exist. Why? Because these are going up, these are going down. Again, this is very good. You, you've got to be careful with what values you choose, especially with trig functions. Um, so you've got to choose smaller values, see which direction they're going, and so forth.